Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are back online and we are just about to start with our next speaker, uh, who is Moshi from Adjust. Hi, Moshi. How are you? Hey, Igor. Everything is great. How are you? Um, I'm also fine and very excited for your talk. Um, a few questions for you before we start. Um, where are you located? Is it a kind of magical city? Oh, that's amazing, right? Uh, the background. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, I'm located in Herzliya, where I live. Um, speaking from my uh, walking uh, office, um, but um, the background is belong to Kokazas. I'm not in in a nutshell, which is a YouTube channel which I absolutely adore. And if you're not a follower, please follow this uh, channel. I'm also a patron of, of that specific channel. I think they are doing an amazing work in in presenting uh, big items in like really really detailed and really in a nutshell um, way. That's great to know. And guys, go get follow uh, this YouTube channel for some inspiration. Yeah. And we are about to get some inspiration from you, Moshe. Uh, good luck with your presentation. Thank you very much, Igor. So, so first of all, I would, I would like to thank Ophir and the entire um, team of the Mobile Summit. It's my first fourth time speaking in this event. And it absolutely... Um, heartwarming to see that uh, although the pandemic of here was managed to pull that absolutely amazing event. Um, this is not a regular keynote uh, because you're in your pajamas uh, watching from home and I'm half and half uh, presenting it to you. So we're going to do some uh, things that we were not able to do uh, when, it, uh, when it was um, a regular keynote. I'm going to do an interactive discussion. If you, will, um, if you will notice on the right corner of my presentation, you will have uh, a link. The link is slido, uh, S-L-I dot I do. Please get inside the link and go to the polling session. We are going to have some polls uh, around uh, my presentation. Now, I, I want to also tell you that this is going to be completely anonymous, so be as honest as possible, and let's go with an icebreaker. So think about the uh, last summit that you've flown into, um, going inside a plan, landing in a foreign country. The question of the poll will be, um, did you ever clap your hands after your plan has landed? That's the first question. Now. The poll is open, so you can kind of start and, and uh, answering everything. And we will come back to that. Good. Uh, in, the meantime, in the meantime, I want to present myself. So uh, a few words about myself. Um, here is me and, and here is my experience wrapped in a very creative way to do a very uh, positive first impression. Uh, the most important thing beside the fact that I gave myself a fake uh, 4.9 reviews on my fake app store is that I'm the general manager of Adjust Israel. And Adjust is an industry leader in mobile measurement and fraud prevention. And by making marketing uh, simpler, smarter, and more secure, we empower data-driven marketeer to succeed. Um, I'm going to spare you the slide about the company of how many uh, how many offices do we have in the Northern Hemisphere and how many data points we are tracking um, and what's our market share. But if you really want to know that, so you can kind of send an email to, I just got robbed by Moshi, but I really want to know what's the pretentious market share and how, and, and why is the sum of all the market, the, all the MMPs markets share is above 150% at adjust.com. And I will send you uh, this slide. If you want, you can also ping me on LinkedIn. I want to start my presentation by talking about the first, or the first experience that I had with Automate back in 2016. And um, this story, regardless of what this picture imply, is not about um, how I got by email the most beautiful, but also the most disgusting giant ginger cookie. Um, it's about the person that stands uh, near the giant cookie. Her name is Sari. She was uh, one of my top user acquisition, um, worked with me both on Mobus when I was the he head of social acquisition and at Viber when I uh, managed the uh, user acquisition over there. Uh, and she was the old package. She was intelligent, she was smart, she was dedicated, she was hardworking, and she was a team player. Um, and she was also responsible for all of our campaigns in social network. 
networks. Now, back then, we took a lot of serious when it came to, when it came to uh, uh, we, we invest a lot in naming conventions. So here is an example of how a naming convention uh, looked like in, an, in a campaign name, um, an ad set name, and a creative name. And as you can see, uh, it was very, very, very complicated to, um, uh, to set those campaigns. Uh, just to give you a sense of how much complicated it was to kind of nail down the, um, the naming convention, a typical campaign that we ran on Viber included, included 30 different countries, two different operating systems, two campaign goals, uh, two placements, six audiences, and three creative Facebook alone, which means that on a typical campaign setting, we had more than 6,000 different names or 18 hours out of them. And, and of course, 18 hours, sorry, 6,000 different names. Now, thing is that it took Sarit, as good as, as, as she was, it took Sarit something like um, 18 hours just to uh, set the campaign and set the naming right. So 18 hours means that two, days in a month she invested just in setting up campaigns right i think that her happiest day in uh, at walk was when facebook introduced the automatic naming convention back in 2016. Um, we were able to cut the walk down to nine hours and um, invested the time that she left in in very interesting stuff right she didn't want to drink coffee with her friends she didn't want to play sony, sony playstation with the time left and uh, she did something very special. And we are going to kind of go back to it. But when talking about automation, right? Um, automation has been um, in, in our industry for more than, more than a decade. Uh, the world automation just embedded in the early 30s, but the concept of man and machine working together is old as the industrial revolution. Now automation has been a competitive edge for companies uh, increasing productivity and improving the well-being of their employees. And I really like the uh, gift from uh, Charlie Chaplin's Water Time. I think it represents um, the funny aspect of automation. Uh, and in today's world, we can find automation everywhere, right? From trading stocks to manufacturing good, from autonomous car to robots performing surgeries, from customer success chats uh, to aviation. Everything is automated. And when speaking about aviation, right, landing a plan is not a simple task, not a simple task at all. Um, trust me, like I've been, I've been a pilot for, uh, for more, uh, for like 15 years ago, and I know it's not a simple task, but, uh, but if you break it down, but machines are extremely good at doing narrowly defined and predictable tasks. So if you break down the lending task to smaller tasks, such as maintaining speed and set a course and uh, apply the send rate, then a machine can do, can perfectly lend an airplane, right? And I want to kind of go back or, or go again to the slide, uh, to the slide of service, all right? Right. I want to go back to, uh, to the server that we um, managed to, uh, do um, uh, beforehand. So did you ever clap your hands after your plan has landed? And the answer is um, quietly even. Let, let's wait for it for just one second. It's very, 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 very interesting to see that you have a lot of yes uh, in that. I thought going to be much more, much less yes. Um, all right, seeing people are answering that. That's great. That's mean that we have some engagement. Great. So let's 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 hold it in in here, right? So we have like seventy percent saying that they clap their hands, and thirty percent saying that they have they never clap their hands uh, when lending. So taking into consideration that uh, lending is an automated procedure, and four out of five lands are being uh, being performed by uh, autopilot, means that roughly, let's say sixty percent. Out of all the people that say 80% of all the people that said yes, clap their hands uh, through uh, to a machine. Uh, the rest of you, the 35% that said uh, no, you should practice gratitude more because it's the right way of living. Good. Let's move on. Right? How do we meet user? Uh, how do we meet automation in user acquisition? 
right? Um, I won't lie to you. Uh, we just didn't invent automation. Automation was there from basically day one. And if you don't believe me, have you ever tried to purchase um, to purchase uh, a single uh, impression in real-time bidding? That's impossible, right? Or have you ever tried to um, set yourself a lookalike audience, um, taking one IDFA after another and combine yourself with 10% lookalike? That's also impossible, right? Automation has been in the digital uh, ecosystem and in user acquisition specifically for quite a long time. And of course, you know, um, DSPs and RTBs, um, RTB platforms are doing everything automated nowadays. Facebook is introducing on top of their audience building and their naming convention, also their automatic creative creation and automatic bid, bidding, bid, uh, so automatic budget allocation. And Google took it to a whole new level, saying that uh, machine doing a much better job at, at um, optimizing your campaigns. Therefore, you should only upload certain assets and we will do the rest. But as I see it, automation, uh, as I described, is a very local automation. And the main purpose of that specific automation is to um, give a competitive edge to the source that's providing the automation and being more competitive than the other sources that you're using. So what we are trying to do in Adjust is trying to combine all the local automation, all the local automation into a specific, into like a, a holistic approach and a walk and a workflow uh, approach of, um, of of giving you a tool that will allow that will allow you to optimize your campaign, your your, your activity. Because by the end of the day, you don't really want to optimize just your campaigns and just your sources, you want to do it across sources, across the application with all of your marketing budget. And come to think about it, when you think about automation, it's not just like a single automation, it's more of a automations because there are several types of automation that I found. I found. And by the way, I used um, Eric Soffert uh, article about uh, automation that he posted on the um, uh, mobile dev memo. And I found that there are five different types of automation. There is the setup automation in which you're setting up your campaign, setting up your application. There is the optimization automation in which you're analyzing your campaign and making effective decision based on uh, the results of your campaigns. There is the audience management automation, which you can build audience automatically out of the behavior that the user are doing. There is the creative testing automation. And I put there an asterisk because I think that automation will never be able to capture the entire creative process. It will still remain human, but there are some aspects of the automation testing, which of the creative testing, which we can definitely automate. And there is the user prediction, trying to kind of understand what's the lifetime value, predictive lifetime value, what's the churn rate or the specific churn rate of a specific user, and then deliver this um, analysis in an automated way. So you will be able to do it uh, much more simpler. And talking about interactivity, let's go back to our um, slide. So, all right. So here is the next question about automation. What is your company automation status is? And servers are open, so you can start and vote uh, through uh, which automation are you seeing? Oh, which, what is your current status of autom automation? By the way, the answers are, we don't really need automation. Our fax and printers are more than enough. We are testing the water slowly. Uh, we are thinking about that. Uh, we are already working on a third party or in-house solution and I'm fully automated robots. Great. And let's wait for a few more seconds. That's amazing. I like, I like the engagement. I like to see the bars moving, right? That's, that's high tech. That's automated. Good. So uh, let's conclude it over there, which like the majority of you are either thinking about that or testing the water slowly, um, which is good. The conversation is very, very aligned to what you're, um, uh, what you're thinking about. So um, let's go next to um, how do we how do we at the just received the um, the automation? So an automation is actually a cycle, right? You're starting with the marketing sources, and they deliver traffic to your MMP uh, adjust, for, for uh, example. 
and just providing you the attribution and the measurement and deliver information to your automation tool. Your automation tool analyze your campaigns, your performance, your analytics based on your methodology and your um, know-how of how to optimize the campaign and then deliver back to the um, marketing sources the, um, automate, the optimization actions. What to do, how much uh, to increase the bid, how much to uh, decrease the bid, um, playing with budgets or, or turning off complaint or turning off uh, the campaigns. Now, when you think about it, because it's a cycle, every time that the cycle is happening, it, the users and the uh, optimization is become more accurate to your specific company's goal. So every time that you, you're doing that cycle, you're actually improving yourself and improving your marketing abilities. And because you're about to automate your, um, your marketing activities, by the end of the day, you're going to be very successful at what you do. As it turned out, the benefits of automation is first of all, improving your productivity because you're no longer need to do those continuously great tasks that you're doing. Um, everything is going to be automated. You're just going to do the stuff that really matters and the stuff that actually contributes to, um, uh, to your value, to the value of your marketing budget. The second is that you're going to boost the motivation of your team. They are they also not going to do this, uh, the hard work, and they're also not going to um, um, do this repetitive task. So therefore, they will be able to get more and, and deal with the cream on top of the uh, on top of the hard work or the cherry on the top, right? And I think it will increase their motivation. Um, we will talk about it later on. Uh, the fourth, the fourth, the third benefit is reducing human errors. I think that everyone uh, that did user acquisition enough had this horrific story about a time which they accidentally changed a budget or changed a bid. I also had this story with one of my UA campaign manager. Um, it was kind of a couple of uh, years ago and I asked him to increase the bid from 100 to 200 for a specific ad set and he increased it to uh, 20,000. Uh, we stopped it after one hour, spending more than uh, 1,000 uh, at budget. But the thing of automation is that it is going to reduce your stupid, tiny human errors. It will not, it will not, um, it will not give you um, uh, error-free approach because you can make some. Sorry. You can make some um, really big errors with, um, with this, but it will help you to reduce those. Um, I touch it and, and I change it completely. Errors. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> good. It will improve your efficiency because as good as your user acquisition is, user acquisition manager is, um, she has to uh, go for vacations, she has weekends. Uh, so because of that, if you're doing, if, if, the, if a machine is doing your work, if you're automating your optimization, then your efficiency will be much better than, um, much better than uh, the others. And you will, not be, um, you will not be investing in the wrong assets or you will not be um, waking up at morning and say, and telling to, your, to yourself, well, oh, I had to do, something about that. And, fourth, and the third and the fifth thing is that uh, the optimization cycle, as we talked about it, is a constant improvement. Now, Adjust is offering two solutions in the automated echo space. We are offering the control center, which is um, a simple, smarter way to manage your self-attribution network campaigns. And we are offering the Adjust Automate Enterprise, which is a more sophisticated way to optimize your campaigns. Um, and well, you can read you can read it for yourself. We'll uh, talk about it um, with you on our booth if you're interested in talking about it with us. I want to go and like I, I want to sum up this um, um, this part by saying that automation is actually leveraging your own data, and this is the essence of automation: how to how to make your data work for you. Now, let's quickly go to the last survey. I introduced with you, I introduced like uh, five different types of automation. And I just want to ask you, 
do you find, what do you find, which automation do you find the most successful? Whether it's like a setup automation, campaign optimization automation, creative creation automation, predictive behavior automation, or audience building automation. All right, I'll drink some water. Great, so most of you are saying that, and of course this is a multiple option, so you can do whatever you want. And most of you are voting for the campaign optimization automation, which I totally agree. Uh, it's very interesting to see what's going to be uh, number two. Um, I will keep this question open for now so you can kind of vote for it at your time. That's good. Now, we already talked about the automation, uh, the optimization cycle, but I want to kind of mention something very specific and very interesting here, right? Because um, as it turned out, what we are doing is that we are taking all the data from our MMP and we are delivering it with our KPI services API, which I believe is the most effective way to, to deliver uh, the data and adjust is collecting data and then transferring it to our partners uh, most effectively. Now, the second part of the automation tool is writing APIs, which you're actually delivering um, uh, the, the action back to your marketing sources, um, uh, the action that you kind of gathered and analyzed with your automation tool. And in that sense, right, uh, talking about the future, and it's the nearest, nearest future, we can actually give you an access to the uh, KPI services API, which is already actually available today and also to the writing API that you have. So if you're a technology provider that wants to kind of practice in either automation, you can do that. And if you're a client and you want to kind of bring your third party automation uh, tool to cooperate with Adjust, you can actually do that by having KPI services API set on one hand and the API in the, in the API for writing abilities on the other hand, you can actually allowing yourself to have a multiple or portfolio of automation tool that will help you to automate every aspect of your, uh, of your, of your optimization cycle. Now, I want to conclude my presentation with, expert from the from, with tips from expert because while preparing to this presentation, I kind of asked all the experts I know that's already dealing with automation. And I actually want to kind of bring their opinion to the table. So the first one that I asked is Maria from BlaBlaCard. She is the head of um, page channels. And she told me that the fundamental role of a user acquisition manager is involving more and more each day with automation. It's important to stay ahead of the curve by keeping your team equipped with the skills they need to leverage automation to make their job more efficient. And this means actually like invest in changing the education of your user acquisition to the relevant jobs that they are doing today. I talked to Andrew French, a marketing consultant and an ex COO of uh, Coda. And he told me that an accurate measurement, attribution, user behavior, revenue metrics is the foundation of a successful automation. And you need a single source of truth for your application before you can even get started with automation, which I absolutely agree. And if you're not trusting your data, automation will not work for you. Um, the fourth, uh, the third uh, tip was from uh, somebody that, um, from an adjust client that uh, was not willing to uh, share his name, uh, but I, I found it very useful. And he said that the uh, complex day-to-day -day operation can be broken down into a smaller automated tasks, uh, creating a synergy of automation and manual efforts to achieve better outcomes which means that uh, even if you're talking about, we talked specifically about creative, even if you cannot automate the entire creative process, you can actually automate the reporting, you can automate the A-B testing of that specific creative in order to, um, to set uh, automation correctly and to help you do your job better. Now the second uh, slide, or the second um, uh, slide of, of tips, start with uh, Rodolf from um, Hiddleglide Publishing. And he said that uh, getting started with automation doesn't, need that you, doesn't mean that you need to reinvent the wheel. Instead, there are plenty of solutions out there, including the Adjust Control Center and the Automated Enterprise, that can drive value to your business from day one. So um, don't be a stranger, go to our booth and talk about uh, our automation solutions. And um, second is Amir Shoval, um, the um, product marketing director of Plarium, which I consider one of the most smartest people in the industry. And he told me that incorporating automation in your work is a gradual process. Uh, the first step is to check that the workflow, uh, the workflow you automated are done correctly by manually verifying 
Um, then eventually you will walk towards the point of automating 100% of your workflows, which is very, very accurate because you're not trusting machine from day one. You want to make sure that they are not doing some big mistakes. And then only then you can kind of go gradually to 100% uh, automated. And uh, I'm not considering myself as an expert, but I'm going to bring my tip, which is having a, a unified naming convention across all of your marketing sources will open new possibility to leveraging your data and will kickstart the process of streamlining your data for automation. And if you want to hear more about automation, we have a fire chat uh, one hour um, later on with Just and Rolik, and it's going to be super interesting. Final words. Um, so answering the uh, white elephant in the room, uh, when our machines are going to replace us, they are not going to replace us. Uh, both example that I present to you by uh, Sarit, she just like went to performing a better, more, more advanced analytics, strengthen, strengthen her feedback to a creative team and help training new employees, which means that we dedicated her time more efficiently in doing other tasks that the machines cannot do. And no one from the expert that I uh, talked to have has fired any employees after setting up automation. On contrary, right? It will it opens new horizon for developing more sophisticated and competitive edges for your company. By the end, it's man and machine working together and not the other way around. Um, and let me finish up with a quote from Apollo Robbins, um, the gentleman thief. And if you haven't seen his TED talk, then you um, I, I envy you because you have to see it. In a world of unlimited information, your attention is the limited resources. So pay attention to your attention and uh, invest it in, at, in, in where it uh, actually should be. Good. That's all uh, for me, guys. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any feedback, if you want to rate me five stars, one star, then just like ping me on LinkedIn. If you have any ideas and comment, also do that. If you're a technology partner and you would like to approach us and hear more about our integration, then uh, ping partners at adjust.com. And if you have any request for automate demo, go to our booth or ping um, automated at adjust.com. Thank you very much for listening.